Hi friends, Lori Woods, GSL instructor from Cuyamaca College. We are reading Same Sun Here by Silas House and Neela Beshwani. Um, we are on page 131, 131. And uh, lots of things have been happening. Uh, to River and Mina, let's find out what's happening next. Um, this letter is written by River. I have an R up here because it says Dear Mina. So I know that River is the author. And we're gonna read till page 141 today. Dear Mina. Oh, this is December 7th, 2008 or 7th of December, 2008. Here are all the bad things that have happened since I wrote you last. Last week, my mother had such a terrible migraine that she had a fit. She was rolling around in bed, screaming with pain. And when mama went in to try to help her, she jumped up and knocked mama down by accident. She hit her head hard on the end table, but she's okay. By then I had ran in there. She was in so much pain that she knocked everything off the dresser and the chest. And then she went to the window and tore the curtains off the hooks. She ran to the closet and started ripping all her clothes off the hangers. And finally she fell right down in a heap and put her hands on either side of her head. Like that. Oh, I just lost my page. So, uh, River is describing his mother having a terrible headache, a terrible migraine headache. And she's in so much pain that she's just destroying everything. Okay, so she put, uh, she put her hands on either side of her head. She pulled out a big hunk of her hair and then screamed from the pain of doing that. That's when mama made me get out. So that sounds like a terrible situation where um, Meet River's mom's headache is getting worse and worse and worse, and she's not doing well. I went into the living room and sat down on the couch, and this is hard for me to admit, so you better not tell anybody, not even your brother. But I sat down there and I cried. I couldn't help it, I was so afraid. Now you know that I trust you with my life or I would not tell you this. I thought she was going to die or that she had cracked up and would never be the same. I'm still not sure if she will be. So he's very sad and worried about his mother and he cried. Before long, mama came out carrying my mother. I couldn't believe it. It made me think of you hauling that bicycle up all those stairs. Mom has lost a lot of weight though. I hadn't seen her in the full light of day in what seems like forever. She looked so little in Mama's arms. This made me want to cry even more. But something knew me in me knew that I had to be strong now. So I got up and opened the door for Mama, then the car door. Then we drove her to the hospital. So he helped his grandmother take his mother to the hospital. On the way there, mama rolled all around in the back seat, screaming and crying. I can't stand it, she kept saying over and over. Mama reached over and put her hand on top of mine. It'll be all right, not soon, but eventually. Then she tightened her fingers around my hand and said, don't fret, buddy. Fret is another word that means worry. Don't worry. But I am still fretting. He's still worrying. Because mom has been in the hospital ever since. And I heard mama on the phone telling dad that it could have been an aneurysm. So an aneurysm is when a blood vessel, I think it's when a blood vessel in your head explodes. So that's not good. I look that up on the internet and it's real bad. I'm awful worried. And he, awful worried means he's very worried. 
The other bad thing is that I got into a fist fight at basketball practice. And now I'm kicked off the team for the first game of the season, which is against our arch enemy, Blankenship Middle School. That really, really sucks. It means he's not happy. But I didn't have any other choice but to fight Sam Brock, who is on the team too. He got mad because we were playing shirts and skins in practice, scrimmaging against each other. And my team was beating the fire out of his. So shirts and skins is the way to tell two teams apart. They were practicing together, same team, but some of them had their shirts on and some of them didn't have their shirts on. So that way you could tell who was on each team because they're on the same team normally. And scrimmaging means practicing. We were 12 points ahead when he fouled me. Fouled me means he did something wrong to River. He accused me of charging him though, and one thing led to another. And he got so mad that his whole body turned red and he was shouting so loud that the whole rest of the team went quiet. And he finally, he called me a tree hugging faggot. Oh. That's a very bad word. Okay, so tree hugging, we know tree hugging because uh, River and his mama love the forest, right? And they want to protect the forest and save the forest. So they are tree huggers because they love trees. They are environmentalists. That means they love the trees. And that next word there, faggot, that's a bad word. That's a bad word. We don't say that word. I never say that word. Okay, so that's a bad word. So that would make you want to fight. His father works for the coal company that is mining town mountain. So he is doing mountain, his father is doing mountaintop removal. Sam's father is doing mountaintop removal. And Sam has had it out for me ever since I brought up the mining and science that class that day. So Sam doesn't like River because River is against mountaintop removal and Sam's father does mountaintop removal. Mama was fit to be tied when she heard what he called me. You mean they let him use that word and didn't suspend him from playing? I don't believe I've ever seen her so mad. I was the one who got suspended because I threw the first punch. I told her, but he said that awful word, mama said, right? Because he said a very bad word. I told her that I once heard the principal use that word himself. When he told the coach that he better not let that other team of faggots beat us. So the principal is using very, very bad words also. He laughed like it was hilarious. But coach just looked at him. As soon as I told mama this, I regretted it because I was afraid she'd go down to school again. I know you're always supposed to stand up what you believe in, but she can't be running down to school every single time somebody does something wrong because she'd stay down there if I told her every little thing. That was when mama just sat down on the couch and put her hands over her face. Lord have mercy, she said. What kind of world are we living in? I thought she might be able, about to cry herself. Her voice, voice was so choked up, but she didn't. So full of hate, she said. And she sat there a long while shaking her head like she wouldn't accept it like it couldn't be that way. So mama was very, mama's very upset because they're using this bad word and the principal is using the bad word that people shouldn't be saying because they're not teaching the children the correct way to act. Bottom of page 134, there is one thing about it though. Sam is all bark and no bite. He got in one good hit, which busted my mouth. But I busted his mouth and his nose and gave him a black eye. So this phrase here, Sam is all bark 
and no bite. That's like talk, comparing Sam to a dog, right? Some dogs, they bark a lot, but they don't bite, right? So that's what he's comparing Sam to because Sam only hit him one time, but River hit Sam three times. Mama grounded me for hitting him though. That means he, she punished him. He has to stay home. After she had sat there and grieved a while, she got up and had her mad at me tone. And what about you, young man? What did I tell you not more than a few weeks ago about hitting people? She put her hands on her hips. Her eyes look like blue marbles, hard and shiny. I've always been real proud of you, River but you shouldn't have hit that boy. Hitting someone is the last thing you should do. I asked her, what was I supposed to do then? She was quiet for a long time, thinking. And for a minute, I thought she'd re reconsider and agree with me. But then she said, the best thing would have been to have told him he was a stupid, ignorant boy, and then walked away. Sometimes you have to stand up for what you believe in and then walk away. But sometimes you have to stand up for what you believe in and fight back, I said. Mama looked at me for a minute, almost like she didn't even see me before her. And she turned around and went into the kitchen and started peeling potatoes. 136, about your secret which I know will never tell another soul. What is rent control exactly? Remember Mina told River that she was living illegally in a rent controlled apartment. She was living in Mrs. Lau's son's rent controlled apartment illegally and she was afraid of the manager. I don't believe we have anything like that here. I looked it up on the internet and the best I can tell, it means people who have rent controlled apartments only have them if their family members were living there when rent control started, right? And that only her family can live there legally, right? I'm not sure I understand. So rent control is a thing they have in New York City. I don't think we have it in California. He doesn't have it in Kentucky. So uh, in New York, you know, they have many, many people but not very many apartment buildings. So the rent can go up and up and up and up and the rent gets so expensive. So they have an agreement, rent control, that they have to keep the rent here. But only if you stay there. If you move, then they can change the rent. Okay, so that's why um, it's called rent control. They can't keep going up, 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 up. Um, but only if you stay there or your family stays there. But Mina and her family are living in Mrs. Lau's son's apartment. So not family. So they're supposed to have their rent go up. But it's a secret that they live there. Okay, 136. It only feels wrong because you all have to lie. But Mama says that sometimes the government and other people are so crooked that you have to tell a little white lie for the greater good. Maybe that's what it is. And listen, Mina, I wouldn't want to be your best. I would want to be your best friend no matter what. You are the best person I know. But I'm sorry, I still don't like to talk about shaving your legs and all that. This is something we have to agree to disagree on. That's my what my father used to say all the time when he would be on the phone talking to contractors who hadn't paid him yet. It's not about you being a girl and me being a boy. I just think that anything to do with hair is gross, man. Sometimes you write things in your letters that I thought nobody had ever thought before except for me. But then there it is in your letter. Like when you said that the city and the mountains have different moods. I don't know about cities, but I do know about mountains. And I know for a fact that they have different moods. So moods are how they feel, if they're happy or sad. Some days the mountains are 
exciting and sometimes the mountains are quiet. And Mina says that also about the city. The cities feel different every day. Today, as soon as I got up, Rufus, the dog, and I went walking in the woods and we went all the way out to the cliffs so I could look at the mountains and see what they were doing over at the mine. Rufus would stay right beside my leg so that I could reach down and cap my hand around his head while we walked. Then he would zoom off in the woods like he was tracking a rabbit or possum. Then he'd slink back out of the brush and walk alongside me quietly for a while, then zoom off again. He's funny that way. I tried my best to not look at the mine. Since it is Sunday, they weren't working, so it was quiet. I could hear everything I felt like. Even though it was cold today, there were lots of cardinals, caught birds, calling to each other in the trees. Their song is pretty, 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 which I think is real interesting for a bird to say that. Maybe that's why they're called birds in the first place, because of that song. I don't know. Anyway, there were the birds and the cold wind. And I know this sounds crazy, but it was like I could hear the mountains breathing. They were all spread out below me, back behind town and all around it too. It seemed to me they were resting today, which is what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath. Sabbath is Sunday, the day you go to church. Even though we don't go to church anymore, I know that you are supposed to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Daddy is real upset that mama doesn't take me to church anymore. But she says the woods are as holy as any church and that I'm in them plenty. Mama reads the Bible more than anybody I know. All right, so mama was comparing the forest to the trees, the woods to church and saying they're both holy, they're both from God, right? they're both spiritual. Anyway, the mood of the mountains today was restful, resting and peaceful and sleepy. Maybe it's the only day of the week that they're not listening to the town mountain being torn down. On those days, I bet they are nervous wrecks. I believe in telepathy. Right, sending messages by your brain. I bet we could have telepathy. I'm going to think something real hard right now. It's 6.34 in the evening on December 7th. Maybe when you get this letter, you will remember hearing a message from me at this time. Let me know. So he's going to think something and for her to hear. Sometimes I think I have telepathy with the mountains. I would love to see that statue of Gandhi. Remember Mina told him about the statue of Gandhi in the mountains? We learned about him in World Civ. World Civ is World Civilization, a class at school. I have not heard of MIA. MIA is the band that Mina told him about. You said that, she, that that was a she. What kind of girl is named something like MIA? Is it pronounced Mia? Weird how it gets has periods between the letters, like it stands for missing in action. My favorite Beatles song is Here Comes the Sun, but that's a secret. I only listen to it when I'm alone. I'll look up the clash on YouTube next the next time I get online. So they're talking about music that they both like. That's cool about the citizenship class you went to. I can't imagine seeing all those people from different countries together in one room. Here, everybody is American except for Dr. Patel and his wife. Most of them are white too, but there are a few black people and some Cherokees. Cherokees are Native American Indians, indigenous people. I haven't even told you about Thanksgiving. The main thing about it is that dad didn't get to come home. He said he had to work. And that if he didn't come home for Thanksgiving, 
he'd get to come home for an extra two days at Christmas. I thought he'd come home early because mom is in the hospital. But he said on the telephone that he couldn't be of any help to her while she was in there, so he might as well work. I wish he had come to see her. Used to be when she got a headache, he would make her stretch out on the couch and he'd put her head in his lap and he'd rub her head until she, until she said it felt better. And then he'd lean down and kiss her on each closed eye. And after that, she'd be well. She said he had a magic touch. And now he won't even come see her when she's in the hospital. So River's confused. Why, why isn't my dad here to take care of my mom? She's very sick. He's supposed to be here in two weeks for Christmas time. I'm looking forward to seeing him, seeing him, but for some reason I am dreading it too. So dreading is like, I don't know, I'm uncomfortable. I don't know why, and it makes me feel bad to say that, but it's the truth. I meant to ask you, how come you always write out Gandhi Hiji instead of just Gandhi? In our world civilization book, it is spelled Gandhi. I liked your thankful list. I would do one, but I'm in a weird mood. I've been kind of sad ever since mom got put in the hospital. But one thing I'm thankful for is knowing you. Aw. I'll write you sooner next time. Please forgive me for taking so long. Write me as soon as you can. Sincerely yours, River Dean Justice. P.S. The other thing is that they found some kind of chemicals in Lost Creek. So Mama has called the government about it, but they haven't come out to check it yet. It makes me sick to think about good little Lost Creek being polluted like that. I just hope someday it'll be clean again. Mama says we can't fish there anymore because the bluegill are probably poisoned now. I hate to think about this. All right, so the river, the stream by his house is now polluted with chemicals, probably from the mountaintop removal. Okay, so that's it for today. I will see you next time. Remember, you should always be writing in your book when you read and make sure you put a river or an R for river at the top of the page or an M for Mina so that you know who wrote the letter. Take care.